Hey, everybody. <laughs> you sound like you're about I'm to deliver some bad news. Hi, my name's George, and in this video, we're going to talk about videos. And my name's Larissa. <laughs> this is not working. No. Hi, everybody. My name is George, and I'm one of the founders here at Crema. And I'm Larissa, and I'm the content specialist here also at Crema. And on today's video, we're going to talk about why and how we make these videos. In the beginning, we had like a bunch of different types of content that we were, wanted to make like vlogs and talking head videos and tutorials and how to's and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But we really just narrowed it down to two simple topics or two simple types of videos. So master level content and then exploratory content. Master level content or mastery level content would be more us digging deep into a topic that we're confident in, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So this is more of like um, the subcategories you could say in this master level content would be how to videos or um, discussing a topic that we know a lot about and that we're really confident in, um, like deep diving into um, something that we've done before, something we have a lot of experience in. Mm -hmm. And then exploratory content is, I think everyone's like naturally curious about things all the time. And we wanna make videos about that too, about things us, that excite sure. us. Yeah. Even if we don't know a lot about it, it's still fun to like start a conversation with the community and the audience about things that we want to learn more about. If you're watching this video, there's more than likely you're part of the audience that we captured accidentally, if we're honest, around Flutter. Flutter was an exploratory video for us. We have our Devs on a Couch series, which is really just two or three or four devs sitting down on a very small couch yeah. and talking about um, what they're exploring, what they're looking at, what they're hearing about. One of those topics was Flutter. That kind of in our space went viral, maybe not like Logan Paul viral, but no. like, I mean, it definitely started to get a lot more views in our normal content. And um, what we found is actually that ended up creating a sub niche and mm -hmm. a sub niche of uh, viewers for us that are really focused on wanting to dive deep into Flutter specific content. Um, that's not all we talk about on our channel though. And so we had to figure out how to balance feeding the machine, which mm -hmm. wants Flutter content and also um, providing content around product management your user experience design and other development technologies that we actually are really great in. But it is that balance of like giving the people what they want and also saying, you know what, we, we want to explore some other ideas as well. Um, so we want to jump in and give you maybe some tips and tricks or things to think about as you're maybe jumping in to produce your own videos. Just some basics, some things to look at, just some things to pay attention to, and maybe ways to get started. Yes. Let's start off first with this crazy idea of pre-production, which, we'll be honest, wasn't something we thought at all about in the early days. No. <laughs> you, you forced, she forced me to do this, and I'm very thankful for it. Tell me a little bit about what happens in pre-production. So no matter what, I really like to have an outline before we start filming, not only so I can follow along during the process, but also to help people flesh out what they wanna say before they get in front of the camera. And I always let people have like a phone or a computer in front of them so they can glance down and just see what's next. And it kind of helps them, it's like a security blanket. It's a cheat, it's a wall to hide behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so when they're working on the outline, I'll kind of check in every once in a while, just kind of make sure that um, it's all organized in a way that'll make sense during the editing process, because that really helps a lot. If you're the only person doing it um, and you have a lot on your plate when, you're, when it comes to like editing and your process, it really helps a lot planning, even prepared, when you're filming, yeah. like chunking everything down. It's just a lot easier. Well, and I think what you're getting at is it actually be easier to edit right, because yeah. then you're not, I mean, we'll probably even find ourselves doing this a little bit, but there's parts of this video that are gonna be cut out, mm -hmm. right? And that's because maybe we didn't say something in the way that we were most confident or we kind of rabbit trailed or whatever that might be, but you tend to rabbit trail a bit more and you tend to not say things quite as clearly if at least you don't have an outline to stick to. Mm -hmm. um, if you can do, if you can stick to an outline, then when you go back to edit, you don't have to spend time going, oh, I gotta take that whole section out because it really doesn't make sense. And, um, and then you have to figure out how to make the story make sense, so. Exactly. Having a plan helps a ton. 
you do more than that. So you'll take that plan and actually go do a little bit of research on it. Yes. So I use um, a plugin called TubeBuddy on Google Chrome. It helps. They have free versions. Um, we have invested into um, one of the first tiers, but basically it just allows you to get a deeper look into how keywords are performing on YouTube because keywords um, pretty much are the bridge between your video and the algorithm. Mm -hmm. And it's like the eyes of the algorithm when it comes to keywords and, and other things, but we'll talk about that later on. So I'll go in and I'll do some keyword research just to kind of get a feel for how um, I want to position the video later on. It kind of helps you get like an idea of what the video is going to be when you start shooting so that you're even more prepared. And honestly, that's been super helpful for us as well because we may have thought a topic was just going to be the most brilliant topic in the world to unpack. Yeah. And then you go do a little bit of keyword research or um, a little digging into that audience. Mm -hmm. And it's like crickets. I mean, there's just yeah. no one out there. And maybe that's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So there, there is something to say there's an opportunity to go um, create that content. But it is that balance of figuring out how much people are searching for things right. and then actually how competitive that idea is and are you ever going to show up. Huge. It's helped us a ton. Mm -hmm. We weren't doing it early on. Nope. Why do we do it now? <laughs>So let's assume that you've gotten your pre-production plan done. You've got an outline for the video you want to make. You've done a little bit of research into figuring out, does anybody want that content? Is it competitive? Can you take a different angle on it? How do you shoot a video? We use a Canon M50. It's a mirrorless camera, but really you can start shooting video with anything. This camera on my iPhone 11 Pro is sick. So you can record with anything that you have that will record video. Um, people usually can't tell, honestly, unless you tell them what you're recording on. If you are filming with a camera though, lenses make a bigger difference to mm -hmm. me than the body does. Actually, the one that we have is a Sigma lens. And so it just kind of allows um, a little bit more crisp video and it just kind of ups the quality just a little bit. Audio is a big thing, honestly, Huge. to me. I think it's almost more important than the vi video quality yeah, for sure. Yeah, totally. So on the top of the road, or on the top of the road the is a road. road. It's a road. On the top of our M50, we have a road mic. Um, before we got the lapel mics, which I'll mention here in a second, we got that road mic, and it helped a whole lot. It's just any mic that's different than the mic that comes with the camera that's in the camera is mm -hmm. going to be better than the mic that comes in the camera. Since we have such a big area, it wasn't doing enough to suppress echo and to just get enough sound information, so we invested in Tascam DL-10R recorders. It's these little guys right here. The little lapel mics. And honestly, you can do this in a, a thousand different ways yeah. and stay relatively cheap. Um, again, the, the, the road mics, probably what, a hundred bucks. It's, it's not terribly expensive. You can get it up into really high end, mm -hmm. um, boom mics and um, directional mics, but these are, these are kind of entry level, quite honestly, and they still produce a great quality sound. Yeah. These um, lapel mics, um, we decided to do cordless, which, and they each individually record separately. Right. You can get a system that actually will record all back to one recorder and then it does it wireless. You can get as advanced as you want, but what we're saying is that you can start simply. The biggest thing is that audio quality makes or breaks a video. Yeah. You can have a beautiful image and if the audio quality, quality is terrible, I am not watching that video. No, yeah. And then one more thing is lighting. Um, Free lighting is a window, honestly. We filmed a lot of our first videos in front of a window. Mm -hmm. We had um, some box lights. I'm not exactly sure what brand they are right off the top of my head, but if you're They're interested- They're cheap. Yeah, I'll put they them down super in, the, cheap. in the comments section, but you can get like a kit of studio lights for like less than $100 nowadays. Yep. Some tips, don't have light behind you mm -hmm. um, because that's gonna make you look like a shadow. Um, yep. Try to have the light in front of your face. Mm -hmm. That's just the biggest thing that um, helps a lot. So there's lots of different things you can do, super cheap, super cheap, but the cheapest, it's the sun. Yeah. Just get your face in front of a window. Yep. I usually start with editing the audio. I use Audition to edit my audio. I just like to kind of raise the vocals. Um, the Tascam has different settings. So I'll raise the vocals, lower the reverb, and that's pretty much it. And then I like to put both, if there's two people or more, I like to put everyone in one track. It just makes things easier in the edit and less overwhelming when I put everything into Premiere to edit the video. Depending on which platform you're on, so if you're on a PC or a Mac, mostly there will be a, some type of editing that is either available or comes right out of the box. Mm -hmm. P, or Mac always comes with uh, iMovie. iMovie. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to get started. Honestly, that's totally. how I edited my first vlogs. 
um, for at home. DaVinci Resolve is a great photo or video editing software. It's free. The base version is free and it's even used in like Hollywood. So yeah. So there are tools to get into editing and mm -hmm. you can keep it really, really simple. We just happen to, to invest into um, Audition and into a Premiere because we have Adobe products already. Mm -hmm. So once I've finished editing audio, um, I will usually do a rough edit of the video in Premiere, and then I'll send the rough edit to the people who were in the video so that they can look it over and tell me if there's anything that they wanna be taken out or if something doesn't make sense. And so once I get the approval from them, I finish what I call is like the polish edit, and that's where I go in and I take out any last minute things. I add transitions, I add um, like little motion graphics, layovers, like color grading, like absolutely everything else happens in my polish edit and then I export it and then I make a thumbnail. And then I do this. Yeah. <laughs> I think what she's actually alluding to is there's actually quite a few steps that happen in this process and you can't underestimate the time that it's actually gonna take. Most people think all I need to do is shoot and upload. And to get started, that is actually true. You yeah. could shoot, not edit, just do it raw and upload mm -hmm. it. But if you're wanting to take your kind of business professionalism up a little bit, taking the next step to these final edit routines is really gonna up your, your video quality. So we invested into some animation packs that allow us to make our own little titles and to, to put those on our videos. You do a little bit more with color grading mm -hmm. and audio than maybe the normal person needs to. Right. But it's really, it just ups your videos just to that next level. And I didn't start doing everything, all this, like when I started here. Yeah. I've learned all this over the course of like almost two years now. So don't feel like you have to do all this right away. The service he was talking about is Motion Array. So it's mm. really good. Yeah. They have it on, um, for Premiere, they have things for DaVinci Resolve too. And then there's other similar services you can get if you're using iMovie or Final Cut uh, Mac products, but it just makes it so much faster so that I don't have to go in and like make something myself. I can just pull out these um, pre-made things and they just make the, the whole process a lot easier and a lot more engaging. Takes it to the next level for sure. For sure. Let's talk for two seconds about this weird thing on YouTube that seems to control everything almost. Yeah. <laughs> it's the algorithm and more specifically the thumbnail. We have experimented a lot. If you go back through our archives of the videos that we've made, how many videos have we made now? Hundreds. Probably. We made a lot. A we lot. made a lot of videos. You can see the progression of us playing with different yeah. styles and different approaches to the way that we do our thumbnails. Mm -hmm. I'm overwhelmed by this topic because I, it, there's just so much science that mm -hmm. goes into creating a great thumbnail. And even more difficult is how to create a great thumbnail as a business mm -hmm. versus the crazy, like trying to capture your attention, click, clickbait that maybe your famous YouTubers might have. Anytime that somebody can see your video, whether it's in their browse, search, browse or their search results or on their homepage, that is an impression. Anytime that little thumbnail scrolls past. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So the click-through rate is how often or how the percentage of people who see that actually click on it. So ideally you wanna have a high click-through rate. What comes into play majority of the time is your thumbnail. Um, your thumbnail needs to be catchy, it needs to pull somebody in, it needs to kind of also give an idea of what the video is about. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much the first thing people see before they read the title. So it's very, very important. Another thing is like the algorithm can actually see what's on your thumbnail, which is something I learned when I went to VidCon Creepy, this last year. Creepy, yeah. but amazing It's very, time. very interesting. It can read the text that's on your thumbnail, it can see the emotions of the people who are in the Does it know what time it thumbnail. is? Right? Now. It can you see it, it might honestly. Google, do you know what time it is? The higher your click through rate is, the more likely the algorithm is to push that video to other people. Yeah. So, Flutter for us, honestly, both the thumbnail, the title, the topic, etc., mm -hmm. we saw that algorithm click in and it kind of, we could watch the trend and we went, mm -hmm. okay. The click through rate started to take place, then the algorithm, you could literally see the trend when the algorithm picked it up mm -hmm. and went, okay, this is relevant to a lot more people than who normally watch your videos mm -hmm. and we'll help you out with that. That doesn't mean anything for any other video. That's the weird thing is yeah. like, you could have this incredible click through rate on one video and that won't necessarily influence the next video. Right, yeah. Thumbnails. It's just, it overwhelms me. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. You've planned your video, you've shot your video, you've edited your video, you've made a thumbnail. Now we have to put it someplace. Yes. Where does it go? On YouTube. <laughs> okay, so 
that's a pretty simple answer. Yes. We chose YouTube and that may or may not be the right decision for you. We've decided that YouTube is going to be our hub and that there can be lots of spokes, meaning we're gonna, we're gonna double down into one area that we wanna put our content and then we can repurpose that content to a lot of other places. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a whole argument of whether or not you should repurpose or shoot specifically for different platforms. We're not gonna get into that. But mostly for us, we put our videos directly onto YouTube and then we'll repurpose it for posting on Facebook, LinkedIn, um, those are probably the most, and then maybe Instagram mm -hmm. um, for stories and things like that. Yep. But getting it on YouTube was our decision to, to kind of double down into that. And that's where our audience is. It's where you are right now. So marketing your videos is a big piece of actually getting these videos seen. So that means you need to promote it on whatever channels that you're participating. So for us, that means that we're going out to Twitter, uh, mm -hmm. we're going out to Facebook, to LinkedIn, and to Instagram, and telling others, hey guys, there's this video you should, you should go check out. Here's a kind of screenshot of it, and a link back, and maybe a short description about what that's about. But it is about us first, kind of driving traffic to it hoping that you also get your subscribers to watch it. And then of course, that the algorithm picks it up and does a little bit of that work for you as well. When you're creating these videos, make sure that you think about the voice of your company or the voice of yourself. Be yourself, um, have fun with it. Don't, I think YouTube specifically, if you're gonna post content on YouTube, they don't tend to react to overly professional videos. So the old adage of creating a perfectly lit space where you're sitting in a chair and you're in your sport coat and you're having this like really formal conversation, is it really what people wanna see? Hey guys. <laughs> it happens, mostly with him. Yeah, people expect to see something a little bit more natural. I wasn't ready for you to, to, to improv that moment. <laughs> I was so confused as to what actually you were doing there. Um, this is the perfect opportunity. So make it feel real. So things like that happen. Be authentic, be, be open to the mistakes. Um, show your outtakes. I think yeah. people wanna know that you're real. And I think that's the really the best opportunity that video gives you is to really have a voice, give a persona to your brand, to your company, to yourself, mm -hmm. that you're not gonna be able to get through a photograph in a blog post. Right. And so this is such a great medium to really show the world who you really are and what you really like. Mm -hmm. And if you're providing a product or service, what it's like to work with you. I think the other thing to think about is this is a long game. We've been doing this for five years, guys. And in five years, we have five, how many subscribers now? 86, or 8,600. <laughs> okay, so we're almost 9,000 yeah. subscribers. Now, in the scheme of YouTube, that's not all that much. You can have millions of subscribers and that's not actually what we're going for. We are more in the game of saying that we want the right eyeballs more than the more eyeballs. That being said, we're trying to grow the audience, mm -hmm. right? Um, but we understand that it really is a long-term investment. So don't expect that because you have 10 videos on YouTube that you're gonna become famous or that it's gonna take and blow your company up. Instead, understand that this is something you're investing in, that this content could help you grow a year from now mm -hmm. or even two years from now, for us, five years from now. And we're really just now seeing the huge returns. 2019 and into this year was the first year that we actually saw new business come from our channel. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. We would love to know, is video something that you're adding to your business? And how are you getting started? What tools or processes or ways of creating your videos and posting them are you using? Drop us a comment below and let us know what's working for you. And if you have any questions about anything that I do or anything that we do to create our video content, you can leave those down below. I will answer them for you. Because we engage with our people yes. pretty actively. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked this video and we will see you in the next video. Bye guys.